I think people are starting to be honest about the fact that a lot of their lives exist primarily digitally. There's this kind of unleashing of creative power that's happening right now. It's almost like having a massive box of Lego and uh, you can build what you want with it and then you can deconstruct them and put them back together again. And, you know, rather than necessarily being forced down the path of somebody else's imagination, right? Virtual worlds are something that really have to be experienced in order to be understood. What we found is that we can explain it for hours to somebody and then we get into a room with them and they're like, oh, I get it. So this is Active Replica's home room. It's a kind of a, a virtual community center, essentially is what, what we're looking at. It's a mixed purpose space where people can come together and meet socially. So what Active Replica does is we, uh, we work with social organizations in order to build a virtual space for them and empower them to connect with their community through these virtual spaces. What we've built here with this, uh, this little home room is our own wing of the metaverse, right? So to build, to build something like what, what you see here requires a whole team. We start by working with professional architects, people who understand how people move through, through real world spaces and uh, why they feel a particular way when they enter the space. From there, you know, there's a whole process of 3D modeling in order to create uh, ground plans, which we then drop into virtual reality and try out. And then we're constantly iterating and updating and um, tweaking and deleting this and dropping that and kind of all of the different fun parts of actually the process of creation. And I'm really excited to look at kind of the intersection of like architecture and the people who are thinking about real world social spaces uh, and the intersection of that with the virtual worlds. What we're trying to do at the Departure Lounge um, and with MetaStage is to really bring humans into this metaverse and have you feel a part of their stories, engage with their stories or actually drive part of the story yourself while you're in there. To date, motion captures really, you know, required uh, actors or performers to put on special suits. You know, you've got the motion capture bubbles or whatever on the suits. But with the meta stage, what we can do is take both the performance and the clothes or the, the costumes or whatever it is that that performer is, uh, is wearing at the time and bring those really very efficiently and, you know, with a huge amount of uh, sort of high fidelity into the metaverse. Scanning is becoming a big element of building these worlds, you'll go out and scan a building and then you can actually create it to be in the metaverse rather than uh, where you would traditionally go and do modeling in the VFX pipeline. Everything is modeled to scale. Now you can just scan it and then texture and paint on top of it and then you've got your, your room. So one of the things that I'm most excited about with Departure Lounge is that we get the opportunity to work on a global scale with some really interesting international projects, but also bring it back home here to BC. We're working with a, with a Haida artist down on Granville Island, a uh, totem carver called Clarence Mills, uh, figuring out how we can take what Clarence knows how to do uh, you know, utilizing that kind of tradition and bringing that into, you know, the modern mixed reality space. Well, look at how easy that was to, you know what, like, I, I have to think like that and dream like that and it actually just showed up. So right now in the early days of Metaverse, there's a lot of opportunity for creating VR experiences. So even right here where we are at CDM, uh, there's a lot of companies that are being incubated here and starting here that are creating VR experiences. There's just an explosion of, of metaverse experiences, which are VR. So it's a huge opportunity for people to get into right now. But to have the feeling of being there and feel like physical, uh, physical reality, that's the trick and that's the exciting part. And that's what we've accomplished here. Yeah, so we started, started uncontained because there just wasn't anything that was hyper immersive. What we've created is an environment that looks and feels like you're actually there. Uh, but then what we start to do is interconnect these, these containers and inter interconnect all of the locations that we have. And then all the systems that we've pioneered since 2016, we can then open those up. So it's almost kind of a rising tides floats all boats scenario where we are in such early day with the metaverse and we're all trying to figure it out together. It's, it's, it's complementing real life rather than replacing um, real life. But I do think as time progresses over the next few years, that devices are going to be far more flexible on, on their use, i.e. glasses like this are going to become more of what we will see for augmented reality and then over time probably virtual reality as well. As more and more people are living primarily digitally, they're finding their ways into social communities online. There, there's something really uh, alchemical and magical when you have a group of people that want to be together, being able to be together 
in a way that they haven't in a long time. There's something really uh, special there. You know, I feel like now is the time that VR is really going to take off and is the time that we're really embracing it.